you can see I have below 2,000 pounds, and that's what I said that. The red light from under shows. At above 2,000, susceptible light shows up. And if I go above 5,000, see the overlight shows up. This is useful for the assembly line or any kind of operator where they're going to be filling up something. You need to be minimum this weight, but not above a certain weight. So it's up to you to do that, and you can set it to whatever weight you want it to be. But that's how you have a light, so it can tell whoever's filling or whoever do any work what is the proper weight. So I'll show you how to assemble that. Assembling the light tower, so you can see three different colors, all the wires. Each wire means something different. So that's what you're gonna need, and you're gonna need specifically an OP900 RO. So it looks the same as a normal 900 indicator, but it has this relay board with four switches. So you can see one of them is for when it goes over the weight, one goes under weight, one acceptable weight, and then the last one, which we're not going to be using. Which could be for sound, for example, but anyways. And you're going to need the connectors itself. So you can see these two will be for the over light, under light, and acceptable. You're not going to use the last two. And then that's for the indicator side. So on this one. And then for the light tower itself, we want to be able to connect it. So we're actually gonna connect these wires to the male end of the DB9 connector, make it into a loop. So our goal is from the indicator, you can plug it in. And once you see, once the indicator signals over, it would actually short the two pins here and turn on for example, the red light or acceptable, turn green or orange or yellow light. So we just want to be able to just connect it like that. So that's what's needed. So to actually start getting assembled, we got to know which wires do what. So simple overview. Gray is your ground. Red is over and I think yellow is under and then green acceptable. And then this one is the sound. So we actually will check that. And Last thing is also the cable. So it's just a normal AC cord. It has three plugs. And this is the actual like relay switch for this. So you can see the live wire, the, the hot wire, neutral, ground. And then that's for the AC plug, the left three. And when this is for the light tower itself, the ground, the gray is going to go here, and then all the other ones are going to go here, the positive. So first, what you're going to check is which wire is which. So for example, if you actually cut your wire, you have to know which one, the hot wire, neutral, and then the ground. So you can use a multimeter. Put it in continuity. Right, and if it... Touch it. You hear beep, so you can find out which one is which. It's not that. Not that one. So it's the last one. You hear beep for the brown wire, so that's one of the wires. Use that one here. And the other one. So you can see that's a blue one. That's the other one. So it's the left two, the live and neutral. And then the ground will be the last plug on the bottom. Where's the yellow? Yellow, green. But do that for your cable and find out which ones are the live, neutral, and ground. So we've got to start hooking up to this. So do that now. And it doesn't actually matter which one it is since it's AC current, it could go either, it goes both directions. Doesn't matter which one goes to live, which one goes to neutral. So double check it again with the continuity. Just make sure you connect it together because you don't want to spark anything. So you hear a beep, that's good. That's the live one, neutral. And then the last one. That's ground. That's ground. Okay. You don't actually need that one, but just in case, it's best to include it. 
So, try it out. Okay. You can see it connected it correctly. So, that's two. And you can see the light turned on. So, I'm actually going to unplug it. So, got that. So, next is the V minus, which is the ground, and the V plus. So, from my light tower end, the ground is the gray cable. Let's start putting that there. And you'll see something. To actually find out which one does what, I said the red one, for example, is over light. So don't touch it with the ground because you don't want to short, but you want to touch it with the V plus. So it creates a circuit where you have your light tower here, right? Your ground goes to red, and you're gonna put it on the V plus. Well, plug it in as well. Your AC cord, plug it in. And you'll see on the V plus what's gonna happen. You can see red light turned on. So you know that's your over light. Okay, uh, my green cable now, so I'll touch it with the V plus. And you can see my middle light, the septable weight, it lit up. So now that is, now I'll just try the yellow light. You can see under light on top and then the last one is actually the sound which is this pinkish color salmon color you hear the beep so you can start getting creative with this where let's say I wanted to beep when it's acceptable weight then you can use that if you wanted to beep when it's under you could connect the under and the sound together or if it's over and you wanted to beep you do that as well by combining two together but we're actually going to show how to make the connection itself so mm -hmm. i have the ground still set up here and how i want to make it like a the wiring so i have my connection here i'm red and black i put it to this one is one and six i just want to show you that connection so what i do is the negative goes here and then usually the other end, V plus, goes into V plus for one of the wires. If I want to make it into a loop where it switches on and off, I connect one lead into here. And you'll notice if I actually try connect the red cable, because you see negative here, here's the other end here, here. These two pins don't touch. So you'll see how, even if I touch these together, it won't actually turn on. Red light didn't turn on. It's because you see the pin one and six are not actually touching. Now I'm actually making a short, so. You actually connect these two, right? Then it will actually short. So let me see. You see, there it is. So that's the idea where once we connect these two together from the indicator side, when it's plugged in and it notices, okay, you're going over, it's gonna close the switch here and it's gonna send closing these two switch here on one and six and then the over is going to turn on so it's easy to disconnect reconnect and if it's acceptable then you can see pin two and pin seven will close together and then that one will go to the acceptable light and so on so whatever weight it is and then that's why you specifically need the relay board because this actually has a switch to short these two pins these two pins these two pins And that's how you were able to actually get a contact, the two switches, and then light up the tower. So that's actually what we're going to do. So we're going to start actually 
wiring this up. So you kind of see a long process. I can show you slight detour, I guess, on how we're gonna wire this RS to the connection to this board because you see nothing's filled in right now. So this specific one, it's only gonna have one RS232, which is the one on the bottom. Sometimes you might see them with two because this one still has, you see, connects to this red, green, black. Transmit, receive, and ground. So if you wanna connect to a computer, if you wanna connect to a scoreboard or other things, this one's not gonna use that. It's only gonna use one of these connectors, so you're not gonna connect to anything else, which is fine because it only wants it for a bench scale where if it starts going overweight, it tells the operator or the person on the conveyor belt, okay, you went too much weight into it, remove some weight. If it's acceptable, it'll say it's good. If it's under, then it'll say keep filling up more. So in this specific process, the customer needs the tower to actually see how much weight is being filled up and make sure you give the right amount for each one. So I'm gonna wire this up. So my specific cable has all the wires away attached, but if not, you're gonna have to make these. And you're gonna have to know the exact pinout for each one. So I could show that on the screen, what the pinout should be for each one, the over, under, acceptable light. So I'll attach that in. Okay, so I actually removed the board. That's this one. So you can see you have to find out which one is which, which also is a multimeter. And I'll show you with that, because I'm not 100% sure which one is the over acceptable under. But we need to actually uh, plug it in to know which one it is. So, so I'm going to actually use my scale to see which one is acceptable under, over. So You're going to need a multimeter again. We'll see what happens and I already programmed it the C13 and C14 setting which is the over under light and you can see how I'm currently under and then that's acceptable and then over so okay so hold down the hold and print and it's kind of hard to see but you're gonna go C13 so right now it's set to 4,000 and that's the upper limit so if it goes over 4,000 the overlight's going to show and then C14 it's 2,000 so if it's 2,000 or below it's going to trigger under and if it's over above 2,000 but below 4,000 it's going to be acceptable so that's my range I said it at but you set to whatever you want and this is just a way to test it so leave it there so right now it's acceptable. I remember this board, I'm trying to figure out on the relay, which two pins are the one being shorted. So it would actually close and have continuity. And that's actually what we're banking on. So right, if you test this, you hear a beep and it goes in pairs. They're right next to each other. Okay, you hear it? So that's acceptable light is these two pin it's going left to right, three and four. And if I go under, let me see if I could turn down the beeping sound at least so I could hear it better. Let's see. No, oh, it's still acceptable. And I have the whole light on, that's why. Okay, so at least it's not beeping a lot. It's not that one, of course, that's not that one. And there it is. So it's pin four and five. That's considered under. Because you see, I turned off the beeping sound, but under. And then if I go over, right. That's acceptable, and then I go 4,000, now it's over. And it's pin 1 and pin 2 going left to right. So 
Right now? So over the first two, then acceptable, the next two. The last two is under. That's how you check, but or you can just remember that. Because these, these are all really should be the same. So you can program however you want, which color you want to do what. But I'm gonna keep it normal. The under acceptable over lights. So remember the color coordination under is these two, then acceptable, then over. Okay, so getting near the end. So see the connector I have here. So I'm actually gonna attach the other four, I guess. These two on top, two on bottom. Connect to these. Because these are the ends for these. And then it will just flip the switch on this indicator depending on which light needs to be turned on at the moment. So the thing is the, let's say the bottom ones, because each, let's say the bottom four are going to go to V minus. You could put all four of them into here, or you could put all four of them together into one and just go inside here. So, I'll show you what I mean by that. And then the top four are going to go in here positive. So, I'm going to put them all together. So, when I attach three here, three here, then they're all going to attach to one and go to the actual connector itself to make a clean connection here. Acceptable light. There it is. So my acceptable light is going to be this green cable, which is the middle. These two here. See, it's actually two and seven. So right now I'm using the the red cables, the top one. Make the connection. So this, this middle one, I go in pin two, goes to the light. And it gets very confusing very fast, but it'll fall along. Let's see. That was my under light, acceptable, and over. And the bottom row is my ground, which made black. So you can see. Now the middle one is the one that's acceptable. So remember my connection is going to be 2 and 7, so the one underneath it, slight angle, so it's this black one here. Right, if I put it here, it's not doing anything, the light's not turning on. But if I get a piece of wire again, to test out those two. This is my last one, right? If I was check, plug it in again. All right, that's my over light. That's the red cable here. Because this is, let's see, All right over. And you can switch it later, it's not too difficult. But. My last red cable is actually going to go to the last one. So, test which one it is, right? Touch it again. See the overlight turn on?
Those are there. You don't want these to touch, because if they all touch, then all the lights can turn on, which is pretty useless. But the ground, or the V minus in this situation, they're all gonna go here. Right? They're not gonna make a difference, no matter what. They're always gonna be touching the V minus and the V plus. So, I'll show you what I mean. So, you see how this V minus is always gonna be the same, it's always gonna be the gray cables, so that's never gonna change. But the bottom, in my case, the bottom three pins for over, under, and acceptable are all going to go to V minus no matter what. It looks kind of bad having this many wires go to one. But this one, I'm going to show it to prove a point. Right? You have my cables, one going to red, green, and yellow. So, the corresponding colors. And with all of them connected, you could actually start switching through them by just the pins. So if it pass one and six, you see the overlight. Two and seven, you see acceptable. And then three and eight, am I correct? It's under. So you can see depending on which pins are on, then it will actually switch through them. So that's fine. And you can also just change it up in here as well, whatever's easier for you. But it doesn't change the fact that the V, my, the v Plus is never gonna change. So what I'm gonna do is connect these three cables into one and have just one wire going inside here. Make it look a little bit neater. So I'll show you that now. So in my case is the bottom three pins, but you can flip it any way you want. Let's say you want the top three pins to go into your V plus and then the other bottom pins could go to the wires. It doesn't really matter since it's just flipping the switch and connecting those two pins, depending which light it is. It doesn't actually matter. So let's just make sure it's separated where you see the over light, setable light and the under light. Okay, making progress. So, last wire would be the sound, but I'm not sure which one he wants to attach to this. So, now it's just time to assemble it, make it look a little bit nicer, and uh, put it on the bench scale. Okay, so you see I'm now, you see under, under light light up, goes up, acceptable, acceptable, and over, so over light turn on, right, it's going here, that's there, so it works, that's all it's doing, it's just closing the two switches. So now we'll actually put it on the bench scale. So you can see the bench scale I'm working on and this is the light tower I'm assembled all together. I'll show you that now. So I don't really have any screws for this. So temporarily I'm just gonna zip tie it to the holes. There's holes on the plate itself and underneath and then a tower on top. But if you actually have some screws or bracket, that'll help it a lot. So, so a lot has happened off screen. But I added a new column up here. It's a lot longer than the one that comes with it because specifically the customer wanted. And you have to feed the wires through it. So I actually had to unsolder these connections to the pin itself so I could actually feed it through because 
this connector won't actually fit through the column itself. So I should unsolder this, resolder it on off screen. But anyway, just remember to put the column in however length you want because the customer specifically wants their tower to be above the readout so you can see it easier. You can see now it's fully assembled with the indicator and plugged in and you can see the under light for me i set it to two, uh, anything 2000 or below will be the red light under see here and that's the red light in the tower and then once like above 2000 pounds now the green light shows up lights up here acceptable and once i go above 4000 i set that the upper limit and that's why the red light up top shows and then over light here and it's up to you for the sound, how you want to do it. Um, in this example, I could set it to over, acceptable, and under. So. You see how I touched the sound cable on the over, and when it's triggered over, it beeped and show the overlight at the same time so that's why you heard the sound so you could do that and it's up to you how you want the sound if you want sound at all but that's how you assemble a light tower 